the early church, but are very probably authentic recollections. Both rebukes are also strongly linked to Jesus' prophecy of his death and resurrection, since there's no occasion for either rebuke without Jesus' prophecy concerning them. There also appear to be Semitic elements and the parallel text in Matthew 16, 21, 23, uh, specifically the terms kingdom of heaven and flesh and blood. This suggests pre-Matthean tradition independent of Mark. Thus, we have multiple attestation. Third, we find Jesus' use of his favorite de uh, self-designation, son of man, which is dissimilar to how the early Christians referred to him. Thus, the authenticity of Jesus' saying in Mark 8.31 is supported by the criteria of embarrassment, multiple attestation, and dissimilarity. Mark 9.31 is a second text in which many scholars have recognized that Jesus' saying concerning his imminent death is probably quite early. Uh, and that's given the presence of a pun when translated into Aramaic. The Son of Man is handed over into the hands of men. And the Greek paradidotai is handed over, which may be traced to the Aramaic participle in the divine passive. Moreover, once again, we find Jesus' self-designation as the Son of Man. So the authenticity of Jesus' saying in Mark 31 is supported by the criteria of early attestation and dissimilarity. In the third text, Jesus institutes taking the bread and cup as a reminder to his disciples that his body and blood were about to be broken and poured out for them. These statements from the Last Supper are supported by primitive tradition preserved in the pre-Pauline material in 1 Corinthians 11 and Luke 22, appearing nearly word for word in the Greek. So you can see up here um, in 1 Corinthians 11 and Luke 22, it's word for word, except that Luke has added the word given. And Mark and Matthew has a little different tradition, and you can see the word for word, except Matthew adds the word eat. Um, other than that, you can see Matthew and Mark have one tradition, while Luke and Paul use a different one. It's still the same message, but the words are different. And so this suggests that each, or Luke and Paul, drew on a common tradition independent of Matthew and Mark. Accordingly, the authenticity of Jesus' saying concerning his death uttered at the Last Supper is supported by the criteria of multiple attestation and early attestation. So in summary, Mark 8.31 is multiply attested and contains features that are embarrassing as well as dissimilar to the teachings of the early church. Mark 9.31, you can see, and the Last Supper have these. Therefore, our three sayings of Jesus have a strong claim to originate with Jesus, and accordingly, we can have a high degree, a very high degree, of historical certainty that Jesus prophesied his violent and imminent death. And if he was a true prophet of God, as both Muslims and Christians believe, we can be confident that his prophecy was soon fulfilled. Now this creates a horrible dilemma for Islam. Because if Jesus died a violent and imminent death as he prophesied, then the Quran is mistaken because it says he didn't. On the other hand, if Jesus did not die an imminent death, as he said, as he prophesied, then the Quran is mistaken because Jesus would be a false prophet and the Quran refers to him as a true prophet of God. Either way, the Quran is mistaken. It is not the word of God. Now, this is an appropriate place to draw an important distinction between Islam and Christianity. Because of, as an evangelical Christian, I believe the Bible is, part of, is, is God's word without error. However, different from Islam, such a belief is not part of what one may call the essentials of the Christian faith. In other words, the truth of Christianity is not contingent upon the doctrine of biblical inerrancy. Christianity is true because Jesus rose from the dead, not because every word in the Bible is true. So it's not an all or nothing matter when it comes to the Bible. Christians believe that God inspired the biblical writers, but we have no idea really how this occurred. We find a different situation, however, when we examine the relationship between the Quran and Islam. Since Muhammad claimed that the Quran had been dictated to him word for word, there's no room for any historical errors. If there are errors, then we can be assured that the Quran was not passed along from God. Now the reason for this is relevant for this evening's debate. Aside from the Quran, there are no reasons for holding that Jesus did not die a violent and imminent death. Since we can know that the Quran is mistaken on the matter of Jesus, we are left with no reason for rejecting the abundant historical and theological evidence that Jesus died by crucifixion. Moreover, since the truth of Jesus' death by crucifixion is not contingent on the Bible being inspired by God, drawing attention to some alleged problems posited by skeptics carries little, if any, weight. 
since it fails to address the six arguments I presented for Jesus' death by crucifixion that are based on knowable historical facts. In summary, I provided six reasons for concluding Jesus died by crucifixion. One, the event is reported by early sources, some of which can reasonably be traced to the Jerusalem apostles. Two, the event is reported by unsympathetic sources who were not biased toward a Christian interpretation of events. Three, the event is multiply attested by numerous ancient sources and in multiple literary forms. Four, the passion narratives are credible since they fulfill the criterion of embarrassment. Five, the probability of surviving crucifixion was very low. And six, Jesus was a true prophet who prophesied his violent and imminent death. When open to possibilities, historians must be guided by probabilities. Given these six arguments I presented by Jesus' death by crucifixion, a very strong burden of proof falls on anyone who would deny it. Accordingly, given the very strong evidence we have for Jesus' death by crucifixion, without good evidence to the contrary, the historian must conclude that Jesus was crucified and that the process killed him. Thank you. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, um, I want to compliment you. You behaved yourself. There was